Let's look into traditional network management now. In a traditional network management, as I mentioned, we can use command line interface or web system. When the network scale is small and CLI and web system are generally used for network management, because in this case, we do not need to use additional tools for us to manage the network. But of course, that there are some limitations. First, network administrator need to log into the device individually, either through HTTPS, Telnet, or console, all right, device by device. So using CLI or web interface, we do not require any program or server to be installed on the network, so the cost is low. Network administrator must have a good master of the network knowledge and vendor-specific network configuration command, especially when you are using the CLI. And this mode have great limitation when network scale is large and network topology is complex. Now imagine if you are the network administrator and you are managing the network, we are having multiple vendor that means that you have to remember the CRI format of a different vendor. So here I have vendor A, B, C, and D, and some of them may use the different way of CLI. So definitely there is some limitation in terms of the difficulty as well as the scalability over here. The other way that commonly used in the enterprise is using simple network management protocol base centralized management. As compared to the earlier one where we are using web management or CLI, here you notice we are using a network management system where it centrally monitor all the network elements in the network. So it's better compared to one-to-one -to -one manage because here we have one to many management. So let's look into the point here. As an MP is a standard network management protocol widely used on TCP IP network. It provides a method for managing network element through a central computer. So this is a central computer here that run the network management software that is network management station. Network administrator can use NMS to query information, modify information, and troubleshoot fault on any node on the network, improving work efficiency. Network device on different type and vendor are managed in a unified manner. Example in Huawei, we can use the eSight to do a query. Then we can actually modify information, including changing some of the configuration using eSight. And they also have an alarm function that allow us to do troubleshooting. That is where we are using the NMS. So let's look into a typical SNMP architecture. Right at the bottom, we have our managed device here. That include router, switches, firewall, servers, wireless access point. So all these devices, we need to enable the agent. So these are SNMP agent. Okay, so all the devices that we need to manage need to run SNMP agent that run on IP network. Here we have the NMS as an example. We are using the Huawei uh, eSight and this NMS will run the network management process and query the managed device and it will present into the client to allow the client to monitor all these devices. So you can see that all these are running based on SNMP messages. SNMP is a standard protocol. So let's look into the theory over here. On a network where SNMP is used for network management, a network management system, NMS, function as a network management center and run management processes. Each managed device need to run an agent process, which is this part here. You need to configure SNMP on this network element. The management process and agent process communicate with each other. So I have the NMS, which is running on the SNMP process and query the agent. NMS is a system that uses SNMP to manage and monitor network devices. The NMS software run on NMS server. Of course, you need to have this software and uh, as I mentioned just now, it's called eSight for Huawei. Managed devices are devices that are managed by NMS 
on the network. So the definition of managed device means that these network elements are managed by eSign or NMS. The agent process run on managed device to maintain the information data on managed devices, respond to the request from the NMS and report the management data to the NMS that send the request. So here we can have the client issue a command to NMS. NMS is going to do a query to the agent and agent will reply to NMS. So this is how NMS work. NMS has been in the industry for many, many years. So it's a standard protocol that well known and support by many vendors. Let's just look into SNMP message exchange. Here we have a managed device. Let's call this as a router. A router may have the IP address. Then the router may have a CPU utilization or the RAM utilization. So these are managed objects. Okay, so these are the objects in the managed device. In my network management system, I can do three functions. The three functions are query, modify request, that is from NMS to the agent. Then the agent can reply the query or reply to the modify response. And agent also can do trap. So let's look into the detail. What is this about? The NMS and managed devices exchange messages in the following modes. The NMS send a request for modifying or query configuration information to managed device through SNMP. So for example, if you are the administrator on the NMS, you want to query what is the router IP address? What is the status of my interface? What is the statistic of the interface we use Query. So the agent process the running on the managed device respond to the request from the NMS. Remember that this managed device is a router. In the router, they might have different managed object here. And this managed object you need to query so that they can respond back to you. So the managed device can proactively report trap to NMS so that the network administrator can detect fault in a timely manner. It means that if I'm going to set a predefined setting in an NMS, so the NMS can do predefined parameters. Example is that I'm going to set off an alarm if I have 80% of my CPU for five minutes continuously. Once you have this predefined parameter set, this information was sent to the agent. The agent, in this case, where the event happened, 80% CPU for five minutes, then the agent is going to send a trap. Hence, we have this um, trap. Next, what is managed object? Each device may contain multiple managed objects. A managed object can be a hardware component, such as a fan, your interface, or a set of parameters configured on hardware or software. In this case, it can be a protocol or IP address. So these are called managed objects. We have many managed objects in a managed device. SNMP uses MIB or management information basis to describe a group of objects on a manageable entity. It means that each of these objects contain a unique MIB. MIB stands for management information base. Now we look into MIB. A MIB is a database contain the variables that are maintained by managed device. On the earlier slide, I mentioned that each managed device has an object and each object have its own MIB. So MIB, the variable can be queried by set of agent process. All right, so this is a database and this database contain this variable that can set by agent when the NMS query them. MIB define the attribute of managed device in the database. So we call this as OID, object identifier of an object. They consist of the status, access permission, and the data type. A MIB provide a structure that contain data on all the network element that may be managed on the network because the data structure is similar to the tree structure MIB is also called object naming tree. Example on this MIB include, you can see on the top we have the root, 
then we have the ISO, Organization DOD Internet Management. So here we have the root here. We have one, which is ISO, Organization, Department of Defense, which is DOD, Internet Management. So it is in this order. This is the naming tree. Then I can go to dot one, which is MIB. Then I can go to the interface and each of these interface may have different interfaces. So this OID can be very, very long. So remember, MIB is in an object, it's a database. And if you want to query certain object, you need to know the MIB. So let's look into the common MIB object. Object used for query or modification, in this case, I have this example on 13612121. The object name is called interface number. The data type is an integer and the maximum access is read only. So remember, they have this OID, object name, data type, access, and then we have a description. Another example here is this number. You can see that this number is very long, which is the HWL P, which is HW hardware, IP, AD address, ENT, net mask. So this is the hardware IP address for this particular net mask. And uh, the data type is IP address, which is the IPv4. Then the maximum access is read create. So we have read only, we have read write, we also have read create. Read create means that you can read, you also can add or remove these parameters. In this case, the description is subnet mask of an IP address. So this is used for query or modification. And if the object are used for alarm, in this case, we still have the OID. So this is the OID. The object name is called link down. Then we have the bound variable, interface index, interface admin status, interface operating status, and interface description. So the description for this OID include is detect that one of the communication link in the interface operation status object has entered the down state from another state, but not the not present state. So this is the exceptional. The original state is indicated by the value of interface operation status, which means that when the link is down, this OID is going to set up an alarm.